Good afternoon, one and all, and welcome to episode 274 of Love at First Sent, with me, Persil Ace, coming to you live from YouTube, as always. Welcome to all of you. Thanks very much for tuning in, and an especially warm welcome if you have just discovered my channel. Uh, for some reason, at the moment, I don't know whether YouTube search results are being particularly friendly to me, or what the cause may be, or somebody is linked to one of the videos, but I seem to have gathered... Um, quite a few new uh, followers and subscribers who've made a point, thank you very much, of saying um, that, that, they, that they've just found my channel. So you're all very, very welcome. Whether you're watching live or you're please feel free to leave a comment, ask a question. If you're all interested in supporting my work in some way, you can find out how you can do that by um, looking at the video description below. First comment on this Sunday afternoon goes to Otis, who says, hello, sir, but Rachel is... Uh, <laughs> just about in second place there, or, or sorry, nearly in first place as well, saying, Mask Milano, excited for Slight of Fern and White Whale. Hi, Leah's here as well, saying, so excited to make a live again. And Rachel, I think, has clocked this because she is saying, just purchased vintage Miss Dior, fantastic green scent. Claire is here as well, Kenyatta's here too, so is San saying good evening from India. Uh, namaste or uh, namaskar or wh 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 whichever whichever version of that you say wherever you are in India. Holly says, I know a few beauty journalists have shared your channel on, on Instagram lately, maybe from there. Ah, interesting, interesting. Well, thank you to them if, if that is indeed what they have done. Frag Chai Town says, greetings from Illinois. Lovely conclusion to a sunny afternoon, says Joan. Really looking forward to this. And Chris Honey says, hello from Moscow. A very special hello to you, sir. Do you know, Today has been a particularly sunny day here, Chris, in the south of England, so um, I perhaps haven't missed your part of the world uh, as much as I have when it's not been quite so sunny, when it's a little bit gloomier. But but then, as I keep saying to everybody, the reason why we enjoy travelling so much is not just because of the weather, but a very, very special hello to you, Chris. Thanks very much for tuning in and belated Eid Mubarak. Uh, Otis says, it is timely that you're discussing Dior. I bought the new Om yesterday, artfully marketed by our friend Robert, yes. And it is absolutely fine. Your review of it was perfect. Oh, thank you very much. Okay, keep the comments coming. Um, I will read as many of them as possible as we go through. But for the benefit of those of you watching live, the plan for today is to do another sort of feature length episode so that we can relax on this Sunday afternoon and have a chat about lots of different things. Some of the things that, well, a, a couple of things I absolutely want to try to cover well, and am um, um, determined to cover is this new version of Miss Dior. We have yet another version of Miss Dior, but an, an unexpected one. I, I didn't see this coming. I'd also like to talk about the latest additions to the um, Atelier Versace range. And I would love to be able to make some time for the new ones from Mask Milano, because that is always a brand worth paying attention to. So let's see how we go. But you know the rules. No matter what happens, we will not go over an hour. And before we start smelling, I should also say, if you are watching live or you watch the recording today, please, please, please try to tune in tomorrow. So that's the 9th of May. Uh, 2022 at 5pm UK time for a live interview with Sally Hughes, The Guardian's beauty journalist and perfume writer, and I think quite easily one of the most um, respected and acclaimed beauty journalists in this country. She's also the author of several uh, beauty related books. So I, I think you don't want to miss that one because I will be picking her brains as much as I possibly can for insights into the industry. Yura says, I have never seen you in such a simple shirt, Mr. P. Yeah, I, th I thought I thought today we would just do the, the crisp white t-shirt thing, right? Um, I'm getting Simon Cowell vibes. Oh, gosh, that can't be a good thing, can it? <laughs> so please be ruthless when you sample these. Okay, well, yes, th there is the flip side of that. I suppose I could just... Well, I always say it like it is, right? Okay, so take a look at this. In, in case you haven't already been aware of this release, you're not. This this came out officially, I think, just a few days ago. So this is called Miss Dior Rose Essence. But if you look at the packaging a little bit more closely, you will see that it has a date on it, twenty twenty one, almost as though it is a, a a particular vintage, because that is indeed what Dior have done. Maybe they have actually been listening to a lot of us who have said, look, if you're going to make all of these different versions and variants, just date them so that we know which one came out when. 
Um, and sure enough, if you look on the back, I'll read the blurb. Precious centifolia rose distilled for the first time at Dior for a fragrance fills Miss Dior rose essence with all of its potent beauty an encounter between floral freshness and the sensuality of honeyed and woody notes. The extraordinary sensation of an endless field of roses, a delight renewed each year, each spring, when the May roses finally come into bloom, ours in our garden are about to explode any day now, nestled in artful packaging infused with rose petals, Miss Dior Rose Essence is a creation that embodies Dior's commitment to shaping a desirable and sustainable future. And there is a press release, I think, um, what they are planning to do, we can look at the press release in a second, is basically if they if they have a, a good harvest, release a special version of either Miss Dior or other perfumes, I don't know. But if you are going to keep doing release after release after release, I think dating them is, is the way to go. Um, because then at least as soon as somebody walks into a shop or sees them online uh, for sale somewhere, they will know exactly where they stand. Um, and, and I'm guessing this is a limited release. Um, I sure hope, says Holly, that Miss Dior has a good flanker now considering the battering it's had over the years. Mm. Let's see. Oh, okay, here we go. Okay. <laughs> what do they call the packaging? Artful. Okay. Lots of lots of compostable looking packaging, which is not a bad thing. Oh gosh. And a very, very, very pink juice. Must be entirely natural, right? <laughs> And that can pop back. Let's let's make sure that we keep things tidy here. This isn't a booklet, is it? Oh no, it is a booklet. I'm just being stupid. Right, okay, it's a booklet. It's not just a card. So we get a booklet inside as well. Let's pop this back. Let's get rid of that. Let's just have a quick look to see if there is. Okay, so far it's in French, and I'm definitely not going to. Oh, here we go. Um is there going to be anything here worth reading to you? Uh, potentially. Let's find out. We need to spray, don't we? Okay, so this is Miss Dior Rose Essence. I'm just wondering whether the bottle is dated anywhere. No, it's not. Interesting. So the bottle doesn't have the 2021. Good evening from Singapore, says Gino. You're very, very welcome. Let us spray this. Can you tell I'm a bit worried? Here we go. Kind of cheap feeling cap, but maybe that's because it's limited edition and okay. Well, it's a it's an extremely delicate, pleasant, gentle, suitably pink. Rose opening. Thank goodness it, it 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 doesn't elicit the reaction that I got from the Miss Dior variant that came out in what was it September or October twenty twenty one? You know the, the the one the one that is actually what we're supposed to accept as the current Miss Dior. But why? The thing that I don't get is why call this Miss Dior when this is a rose perfume? It is. Oh, Okay, so what we are getting is an extremely naturalistic, really actually quite beautifully naturalistic, to give it its due, rose. So it's got it's it, it's got the creaminess that you would want for, it's got the the the, the gentle green freshness that you would hope for. Um but it's it's not it's not particularly dark, so it's it's not coming so you know, this isn't like a Garlan Emma rose, which is my sort of reference. Um, tempestuous, dark, dramatic, operatic rose. So it, it doesn't have a great deal of pepperiness. It, 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 it doesn't have that darkness. It doesn't have that petals on fire feel to it. Um, but I am also kind of thinking, okay, so it's a pleasant enough rose. And so what? Was the harvest that good that they decided they needed to um, bottle it for some reason? Let's see what this little 
Miss Jaw uh, Rose Essence booklet. Actually, no, let's look at the press release first because that's shorter because it may be that there isn't a huge amount to say about this and we just move on. Today, for the very first time, Dior has chosen to distill the entire May rose harvest from the Domaine de Manon to collect its rose water. A unique, crazy challenge. Why is it a crazy challenge? To give Miss Dior the most beautiful and the most precious of floral waters. In a tribute to the unique nuances of the Queen of Grasse, Miss Dior Rose Essence celebrates with infinite pleasure the full beauty of the May rose, the sensual velvet of its petals, the exquisite green of its stem, and the powerful accents of its native soil. Such are its glistening, joyful facets. Did you, did you notice me explode in a firework display of joy when I smelt it? The rounded, supple, and soft rose, supple is a good word actually for this, uh, and sorry, and soft rose water refreshes and permeates a base lined with notes of vetti ver, patchouli, and a potent guyac note. Steeped in naturality, the composition enjoys the luxury of a lower than usual alcohol level for a perfume while remaining intense and persistent. Miss Dior Rose Essence or sorry, or the floral, fresh, and woody celebration of a vibrant grass springtime. Okay, so is the idea that it's a sort of lighter, um, li oh, somebody else has popped up here. We've got a Chris Honey and Renaud Salmon. Good evening, sir. The claim that they are using rose water, not rose essence or absolute is quite interesting and surprising, actually. Yes, I thought that because, because nowhere does it, you know, rose essence, it says on the packaging, but then you're reading this and it says rose water. And I suppose it does have that that clarity that you get from a good quality. Um, well, somebody else commenting on the simple white T-shirt. May <laughs> what happened? Okay, next time I promise I will have to wear something really, really crazy and colourful. Um, so if they just thought they wanted, maybe, maybe somebody thought, hey, we let's let's what was this? Let's let's come up with this unique and crazy challenge and harvest some rose water. I don't, I still don't understand what's quite so crazy about that. Um, and maybe they thought, okay, what perfume could we label it under? And somebody said, why don't we do it as a Miss Dior? But still understand that. And is there anything from here that I should? Uh, read to you. Let's let's take a quick look at this, and 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 if we if we start losing the will to live, then we'll move on. Miss your rose essence. There was a time in grass when the fields of flowers stretched as far as the eye could see. Centifolia rose, jasmine grandiflorum, tuberose, and many others filled the air with their delicious scent and secretly perfumed the water that ran through the fields with their powerful fragrance. These naturally scented floral waters flowed into the city's fountains, and so scented fountains were born. I wonder if that's true. That's amazing if that is true. Anybody anybody knows um, whether that's true or not? I mean, I'm sure it must be true if they've put it in this book, right? Today, Monsieur Rose Essence is reviving their memory and writing a new page in the history of grass floral waters with centifolia rose water. So again, as I know, I pointed out, it's rose water, rose water, rose water. A personal pleasure passed down from generation to generation by the women of Grasse, floral waters are delightfully fresh and delicately scented, drawing upon the expertise and specific techniques passed down from mother to daughter. The precious water is produced by distilling the roses from their personal harvests, a beauty ritual with age old virtues. I smelt some beautiful rose essences and rose waters during a recent trip to Oman, but I hope to be able to tell you more about that soon. And hopefully in the presence of Monsieur Salomon, who has agreed, I think I can, it's okay to say this because he, he has agreed to come back for an interview. So please show your appreciation for the fact that um, he has agreed to come back for an extended interview, but we haven't set a date yet. So that then, and, and we will talk a lot about Rose when he comes back, I'm sure. Today, Dior is the heir to this expertise, offering the quintessence of centifolia. <laughs> yes, lots of comments coming through already. Offering the quintessence of centifolia Rose floral water to women around the world. <laughs> Don't I get to use it then? <laughs> The celebration of an untouched olfactory memory, the heart of Miss Dior Rose Essence shines with the precious drops of a fresh centifolia rose water distilled for the first time at Dior from rose selected with care from the harvests of the Domaine de Manon, Dior's exclusive and historic partner in grass. The production of Miss Dior Rose Essence is limited to the yield of these few plots of rose bushes, making each product all the more extraordinary as it follows the rhythm of nature. A delight renewed each spring when the centifolia roses finally come into bloom. Okay, 
So I'm, I'm not going to carry on reading because I think we need to move on. Rather gorgeous picture there. Although there is also a picture of me picking some roses in Oman. This is true. Um, more and more new releases are starting to go in the light and watery direction lately, says James. Yes, you are not wrong. And, and also this kind of um, claiming exclusivity, you know, we use a rose that nobody else uses or we're, we're tapping into age old um, rituals and, and age old uh, bits and pieces of knowledge. I mean, uh, Aurelien Guichard basically was talking about that sort of thing the other day when he did the interview here because he is, uh, he's using the enfleurage technique for his tuberose extract for his latest release. Um, is it limited? How limited, says Time to Musk Up? I, I don't actually know because nothing seems to be confirming that it's limited. So perhaps there might be something on their website. OK, but how does it smell? It smells like a very pleasant, extremely well done, dewy, delicious, green, fresh, charming rose water. But you tell me whether you would like to spend £136 on it on what's the size this looks like 100 mils doesn't it yes on 100 mils so i leave that one with you but of course we will i will let you know how it develops it seems to be getting sweeter as it's going along okay let's move on let's move on because we want to do as many things as possible today now some of you may remember that uh a box that looked very much like this one led to a video in which I expressed rather negative opinions. I think it was in 2020 that I did a video on the first set of scents from Atelier Versace. The box looked very much like this, except it had different perfumes in it. Um, as Time to Mask Up says, looks like lower end designer releases uh, are creeping up to $150. And Shabir says, no thanks, meaning the price, I think. I put rose water in my food. I put rose water in my marmalade. And I have to say, it, it um, as in when I make marmalade, it, it um, produces a, a very, very sort of interesting, subtle effect. So the first lot of these Atelier Versace exclusive high-end Versace scents, I was singularly, singularly unimpressed with. I thought they were quite cynical pieces of work. Uh, putting scents into their bottles that did not reflect the crazy prices. They really were a crazy price. Uh, but now they've done these six follow-up ones, which you should be able to see. Let's see if that stays open. Is that going to stay open? And I, a, a few weeks ago, I had an initial sniff of these. And certainly with a few of them, I thought, okay, these seem to be in a somewhat different league. Um, although there is all there is also a part of me that's thinking it couldn't possibly have been worse than those other ones because the, I, I really have no time at all for the other ones. So I think as we are here together having a pleasant Sunday afternoon together, we should try and smell as many of these as possible, but I'll need to do some labeling of blotters. And um, why don't we go in the order in which they've been presented to us here? Four of them are by Jordi Fernandez. And I will tell you which ones as we're going along. So let's try. There is an iris, there is a saffron, there's a ginger, an incense, a tobacco, and a mate or fleur de mate. So let's get my pencil. Uh, any Versace fragrance that has blown your mind, says San. Just curious. Lately? That's a good question, actually. I think lately I would have to. Well, blown my mind in all the wrong ways. I mean, we all know what I, well, some of us know what. I think of Eros. No, actually, hang on. I take it back. There was one. It didn't exactly blow my mind, but I thought it was a really interesting, perfectly well done fragrance. And it was the a women's version of Dylan Blue. Um, but look it up on the on the Perfume Index uh, page on my website because I may be getting getting it wrong. It was done by Calice Becker, and it was a really good appley, jasminey sort of scent. Um, definitely worth more attention than it got. So there you go. That was one. Um, excited for the iris says it's me Aubrey because iris. Um, let's see. So this is Iris d'Elite, Elite Iris. Here we go. We we'll try and do as many of these as possible. We'll, we'll, we'll really do just initial sniffs and then I'll 
see if I can give you a proper bl blotter update later. Those Versaces are barely carried anyway, says Time to Musk Up. Saks on Fifth Avenue in New York put them in a dark corner of the store. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Do you think the box is trying to tell us something? Um, stay open. Okay, the iris is, yeah, I agree, Aubrey. Um, the iris is darker than you would expect. So, you know, normally if, if, if you're thinking that it's going to be iris, 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 you would expect something whiter, more melancholic, powderier, earthier, rootier. This is, this is a kind of almost heading into kind of sticky vanillic iris, but it's interesting because that somehow makes it more nocturnal, like an iris that's decided that she's fed up with being called the Ophelia of the party, and actually she is going to wear a red dress and go and let her hair down and dance till the small hours of the morning. Okay, so that's one, that's one. I said, we keep going, right? Suspicious of anything called elite, says Frag Chaitan. Next one is the saffron. So the iris is by Jordi Fernandez. The saffron is also by Jordi Fernandez. Let's get that one going so that we get as many initial reactions as possible. And then we can do the comparison and sniff them together and and you will you may be relieved to know that I don't have a press release on this one. Um because I dread to think what that might be like. Uh it's me, Aubrey says, okay, it's not for me that Iris. I am a cold and melancholic person. Oh, there you go. So this is Saffron Royal, Royal Saffron. Also, you know, a name that kind of makes you think, oh dear, are you gonna live up to this? Oh. Okay, that one doesn't start quite so well, but okay because the, the the saffron note does come through so it's got that kind of burnt earthiness that kind of tangy dryness but there's also something sort of vaguely cheap and unpleasant happening in the background hmm Give that one a moment to settle. Interloper 80 says, as a consumer, there's no way of knowing if these claims of exclusive natural raw materials are true. I suppose this is in reference to the Dior, right? And fragrance brands marketing is full of myths and nonsense. I think what I would say to that, Interloper, great handle, by the way, is that I think what we don't know is the extent to which they're true. I think if a brand actually makes a claim, there has got to be some truth to it. So if they say, this fragrance contains, you know, a natural blah de blah that we got from a particular site in a particular location of France, uh, you know, where 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 there was some kind of mother daughter connection. There will be a core of truth in that, but they're not telling you how much rose water they put in there. It's like it's like the the, the Chanel thing, where every drop of Chanel Number no. Five contains some of the rose extract uh, from their own fields, but you don't know how much, you know, it, it could be an infinitesimal amount. And of course, when you're making such claims, I would agree with you that you kind of need to know the extent to which the claims are true, but then that's when things start becoming a little bit secretive and shady and mysterious. Uh, exactly. Lyndon says, Versace is owned by Michael Kors. Imagine the budget for these perfumes. Um, okay. Well, maybe. <laughs> and is it all downhill after the iris says drawn by sense? It may not be. Now this saffron, this saffron is trying to do that kind of Arabian saffron flirting with Dubai mouth thing, but there's there's a kind of strange, somewhat off-putting um, fabric softener, synthetic musk thing coming through. So uh, let's move on and let's do the ginger as well next, also by Jordi Fernandez. Uh, and this is gingembre pétillant, which means, no, hang on, that doesn't mean, does that sort of mean sparkling? Is that right? Uh, somebody will help me out with the translation of that, I'm sure. Is it sparkling or bubbly or that kind of thing? 
Um, here we go. The ginger, 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 I think an underused note in perfumery, but let's see what this is like. So, gingembre pétillant. Nothing coming through yet. Hmm. They, they, they all just... Well, so far, there are three to go, right? What can I say so far, having smelled the three, three, three so far, is that they're definitely not as off-putting as those initial ones were. But then, like I said, I, I really did not have very much time for them. I, th I thought that I thought they were pretty poor. And, you know, to call them exclusive scents and to market them in sparkling, says Chris Honey, thank you very much. Um, so sparkling ginger and ginger ale, as Claire says, yeah. You know, when you think of sparkling ginger, I mean, it, it ginger should be so fizzy and happy and joyous. And also ginger, I think, is so distinctive as a material. You know, if you, if you have a good quality, I remember once smelling a CO2 ginger extract. It was just beautiful. It really, really suddenly felt as though these um, ginger shavings had been placed right under your nose. Um, this is not doing... Any of that, I'm sorry to say. Frag Chaitan says, Dirty Ginger from Heretic Parfum is a favourite. I haven't smelt that one. It, so like I was saying, so far they feel rather flat and they don't feel like you are smelling where the money is. Um, and, and you are paying a lot of money for these. Just just Google them and you will, you will, you will see how much Versace are charging for these. You know, they are charging serious money. Um, so far, they feel rather flat and and just tired, you know, like 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 a sales assistant in a shop where the the goods are so exclusive and so expensive that they don't actually see any customers for days on end, and they start losing the will to live. Uh, Five o'clock by Serge Lutens is my best ginger, says It's Me Aubrey. And Aqua Allegoria Ginger Picante is quite sparkling, says Natasha. And probably I would have guessed about a third of the price of this, if not a quarter. But let's move on. Let's do the incense. Now, the incense is also by Jordi Fernandez, which means that the last two are by the different perfumers. I have a feeling that the incense was one of the ones when I smelt it before. I thought, oh, okay. This is this is quite a nice incense, but it's called Encens Suprême, so Supreme Incense. Holly has looked up the price of these, okay? £320 for 100 mils, not a chance, she says. Yeah, it's especially now, you know, buying an expensive perfume or any perfume has always been a, a real financial commitment. You know, a lot of people see it as a as a sort of wardrobe investment because they may only buy two bottles a year. Now, especially now in, in the Western world where the headlines are full of things about, you know, are you going to be able to afford to buy food or heat your house? £320 for 100 mils of perfume suddenly takes on a whole new level of serious. Anyway, this is Encens Suprême. Yeah, OK, thank goodness. I, had, I, I seem to remember that the, that the incense one was, was, was nicely done. Um. Although, again, interesting, in interestingly, I should say, not, you know, not in the same league as Avignon, not in the same league as some of the incense notes that you will smell in an Amouage perfume, we should say, as we've got a few people watching from Oman, or um, Andy Towers, Incense Extreme, you know, some of those, those, uh, and also the incense scents from Armani Privé, right? Uh, what was the, um, the, 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 the sort of, the, the flagship scent, I, I forget what it's called, but Again, it just feels a bit flat, like it just doesn't have the impetus and the energy and the will to pick itself up and 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 come to life. Um, Western Oud says, Versace, go and do it again. Disappoints with its perfume. Not that surprising, really, is it? Well, yes and no. You would have thought that. I mean, okay, they've got their they've got their mainstream high street scents, but you would have thought that if they're charging as much as they're charging for these sorts of things, um, that they would put the quality into it. Bois d'Encens says, "San, thank you very much." That's the Armani Privé, which is a really, really great incense perfume. So here, you it, it, this is recognizably frankincense. 
and it's it's veering more towards the kind of stony mineralic but you're not suddenly transported you know to the to the inside of a church or or a temple you don't you don't immediately get carried away by those coils of of smoke you know from when you're burning um burning the incense gum which 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 is, is a shame right two more we've done four so we may as well do two more and then we'll re-sniff them now next we have the tobacco so tabac imperial by uh marie salamagne uh where's my pencil gone here so let us see what this is like um tobacco also um an underused note and who was it i forget who it was but I think somebody was telling me that we're a little bit confused by tobacco notes in perfume because a lot of the time when we're told that something is tobacco, actually it's not. Um, and there are other notes that have been put in there um, to substitute tobacco to make us think that it's tobacco. I suppose a little bit like, you know, patchouli um, being snuck in there to make us think that it's oud. Some say recent batches of Armani Bois d'Ancens are severely watered down, says San. Is that true? Don't know. Don't know. I have. I've just gotten my precious bottle from a few years ago, and I haven't smelt the the more recent ones. If it is true, that would be a real shame. Tobacco, vanilla, and booze. Sam's time to musk up. Let's smell this. So this is imperial tobacco. Okay. So it's got that kind of honey and hay feel. You know that sort of dark, dangerous honey that you want from a good tobacco scent. So certainly a very, very good start. But I wonder if it's actually going to um turn out to be quite sweet. How many of you remember from a few years ago, was it was it one of the last perfumes, if not the last, that we got from Vero Kern, from Vero Perfumer? What was it called? That was a tobacco perfume. Oh, that's really, really going to bug me now, because all of her perfumes just had four-letter names, didn't they? Um, one of you will, one of you out there will know what it was. I reviewed it. That, that, that was a really, really interesting, unusual, strange tobacco scent. And, and it had this kind of shamanistic quality that I think was what she was actually aiming for. And it made me think of that movie, fantastic film, if you haven't seen it, called Embrace of the Serpent. Um, Naja, thank you very much, Holly. Thank you. Uh, that, that was, yeah, this is, this is definitely so far tending towards sweetness. But 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 so far we're we're starting to do better. Okay, so the incense was definitely better. The tobacco was definitely better. It's Miobri says I am from K Y K Y. You're going to have to help me. Where's K Y? I'm sure I know. I'm going to kick myself as soon as you tell me, aren't I? And I've been in tobacco barns before, but I haven't actually smelled a fragrance. Kentucky, thank you very much. But I haven't actually smelled a fragrance that hit quite close to the dryness due to notes they're often combined with interesting so there you go so you know and 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 people have told me that as well in the industry before that a lot of the time what we've been told is a tobacco note isn't actually an accurate tobacco note uh mark says nice to see you again mr personalize always makes my day a thousand times better that's very sweet thank you very much love your videos um yeah it th there's a woodiness attached to the tobacco as well but it's got it, it, it's it's fine. I'm thinking as well of Roaring Radcliffe, which I thought was another good tobacco scent from Penhaligans. Discontinued, I believe. Obviously, nobody else um, agreed. But you know, they don't they don't have that they don't have that sending light bulbs off, flashing in your head with the, with the sort of am amazing quality that you smell. And finally, we have Fleur de Maté by somebody who is no stranger to this channel, um, Monsieur Olivier Cresp, who we need to get back actually, so he can talk to us about his ink scent or acro. Let's see, let's see if it's gonna be three half decent ones in a row. Um, but I, I think I think you can tell from my tone, I think you can tell from the forehead, from the general expressions that I, I can't wholeheartedly recommend these to you and especially not at that price. You know, the, there are better incense perfumes out there. There are better tobacco perfumes out there certainly better saffron ones out there. So then you kind of think, okay, Versace, try again harder next time. Okay, this is this is interesting too. Well, in streamy masculine from a few years ago that maybe didn't do terribly well. I don't know why. And so I I, I never I never 
I, I try not to question these sorts of instincts too much because there is usually something in them. But I suddenly had this vision from years ago of walking into a Sephora somewhere in France. I have no idea where it was. And um, Jean-Paul Gaultier's Cocorico had just come out and I smelt it. And this is making me think of Cocorico. Genius bottle, easily like one of the one of the cleverest perfume bottles ever made. And if you don't know what I mean, then look up the Cocorico bottle and make sure you get a picture of the Cocorico bottle taken from several different angles. Really, really nice ad campaign, quite decent perfume. I believe it may have been by Annie Minardo, but please don't quote me on that because my memory is not fantastic when it comes to these things, but somebody will tell me if I'm wrong. And um, as time to musk, yes, you're right, time to musk up. So you look at that bottle from sort of full on and it looks like one thing and then you look at it from the side and it looks like something else. It's It was just so well done. Um, but this has got that kind of sort of resinous, powdery, woody, good mainstream masculine scent. This is this one is actually not bad, but it. sorry to keep going back to price. It shouldn't cost £350 for 100 mils. This is the kind of thing that a mainstream, you know, this is, this is what Eros should have been, okay? Um, because it's got it's got the right level of freshness to it. It's got the right, right level of leatheriness, woodiness. It just feels like an extremely well done mainstream masculine scent. And so I will be fascinated to see how it develops. Right, let's put this box away because it is taking up a little bit too much space. So thank you, Atelier, for letting us smell your work. And let's re-sniff them very, very quickly before we move on to the Mask Milano. What should we do? What should we do? So I should have six here, right? And I have got six, thank goodness. And don't worry, I will do a blotter update as well afterwards. Let's go back to the incense. Um, yeah, see, the incense is already going quite quiet, you know, really quite shy and demure. The ginger... The, 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 the ginger is becoming kind of general walk into a perfume store and you get like a kind of generic walk really, really doesn't have the life and sparkle of ginger at all. Um, Versace are going through some strange and awkward times, says Holly, so it perhaps makes sense that the perfumes are following suit. It really is a shame, though. The iris? The iris has still got something interesting about it, just because it isn't going down that more predictable chilled iris route. But it hasn't, it hasn't got much strength to it. It hasn't got much power to it. The saffron... No, the, the saffron to me is that is is the sort of worst of fake Arabian perfumes. You know, the ones that are sort of trying to play a certain Middle Eastern card, but just don't manage it. Seems like every designer brand says Interloper wants to jump on the private line bandwagon, but the premium price tend, uh, needs to match the perfume. Yes, and I think I think there are hardly any brands that haven't done it well. And the tobacco. But the tobacco's the, the tobacco probably uh, on this first sniff. The tobacco is probably the best one, because it's somehow the most faithful, and it's it, it it seems to have more layers to it. It seems to have more details to it. Um, yeah, you keep kind of wanting to come back to the to this one and try to figure it out. And then finally, Monsieur Cresp's Fleur de Mate. Yeah, nicely done. Nice balance of sweetness and dryness. But as I say. 10, 15 years ago, this totally would have been a mainstream masculine release that would have deserved to have done well, but maybe wouldn't have done well. I don't know. So there you go. Uh, a whistle-stop tour of those six. Hmm. What are people saying? Uh, the Eros Parfum was such a disappointment, says Jay. Uh, Woozy says, regardless, they're all overpriced. Yes, I can't disagree with you there. Okay, let's have a bit of a reset. And let's go to some a brand that it but that um, at least tries to be uh, more daring, more bold, more interesting. Two new releases from Mask Milano, uh, and I believe these round off the opera series, but I'm not sure. I wasn't able to attend the online press launch for this one. The information will be out there somewhere. So we have now got Act Four, Scenes Three and Four. Scene three is called Slight of Fern, and it's by Stéphanie Vercouche. And scene four is White Whale by Christian Allori. 
Um, will you be trying the new Parle-moi de Parfum, says Wuzi? I would love to. I haven't been able to get a sample so far. As you know, I have a lot of time for that brand as well. So let me see if I can get a sample. So let's go in order. Slight of Fern is one of these names that you think, okay, somebody maybe who doesn't quite get the nuances of English thought this would be a clever name to give a perfume, but never mind. Let's see if it actually smells uh, fern-like, because as I'm guessing, it's going to be some kind of a fougere, right? Let's see then. So Stefani Bakush's Slight of Fern, latest from Mask Milano. I believe they were released only a few weeks ago, three weeks ago. Mask Milano was my introduction to Love at First Sense, says Joan. Well, how great. I heard they wanted to do a classic fougere with this one, says Rachel. Okay, let us find out. And Azuki2 says, could you review the new scent experiment by Rook? I was really impressed. I haven't smelled that one either. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, thank goodness. You know, sometimes you start thinking, okay, am I actually having a really bad day and just not smelling properly and being really unfair to the Versaces in this case? But um, no, this is interesting. It's suddenly, there's so much going on here. Um, it's the same as the perfumer behind Invasion Barbare, says Ali Boy, which I think is still my favourite um, MDCI. My first Mask Milano was uh, Ertessa. As much as I like the opening, the base was really disappointing, says Wuzi. Okay, so this seems to be doing so many things at the same time because you are totally uh, taken to those kinds of 1950s, 1960s men's barbershop scents, so proper, proper fougere, but without that kind of crass horribleness, um, technical term, that has blighted that particular genre in the last, I don't know, 15, 20 years. But, but also there seems to be something more modern happening. So, so you, get, you, you, you get the kind of lavender, geranium, herbal, mossy note, but it seems to be curiously more medicinal. Um, oh, it's really fascinating so far, actually, really, really fascinating. So the lavender seems as though it's laced with eucalyptus, there's something quite kind of funkily animalic happening there in the base. Um, yeah, it somehow manages to be classical and modern at the same time and very, very, very properly hairy chested, um, in, but in, in, in a good way. I just, I just realize what I'm wearing as I said that, but, but yeah, okay. Um, this seems alive, says Rachel. Yes, completely, completely. And you know, when, when and, and and funnily that you should say that because with those Versaces, I kept thinking to myself, they are just dead. They're not leaping off at me at all. Whereas this this is this is like reminding me of all of the best bits of old fougere, but but somehow made maybe greener and more herbal. Ah, fascinating, fascinating. Let's see what the brand actually says about it, and then we will smell the whale one as well. So, Slight of Fern. Um, Slight of Fern, Fern has been created uh, with respect to the historic construction of Fougere fragrances, in line with the most deep, unique, and recognisable notes of the classic formulations, which are the ones that also enhance a Chypre signature. We worked on this new composition with the aim of making it elegant and distinctive, uh, sensual, addictive, and very sophisticated. A new fragrance that brings comfort and souvenirs of our forefathers, as well as modernity and unexpected combinations. Tuberose and Narcissus play fatal attraction in the heart of Slight of Fern. Gosh, if you say so. I mean, yeah, I'm a Narcissus I can get. Uh, bringing depth, complexity, and a very attractive sensuality to the minty and rosy geranium. This mesmerizing floral heart opens with crispy citrus, spices, and aromatic herbs, that gravitate on top to showcase the most pleasant and modern facets of French lavender. This unique scented journey gently leads with confidence to a stylish, vibrating and refined woody leathery base, where birch wood echoes with le leathery red thyme and um, oregano on top, the circle is squared. I mean, really fascinating. So officially the notes are bergamot, French lavender, a fig sap accord, lentiscus, Red thyme, tuberose, geranium, narcissus, sandalwood, 
Birchwood Essential Oil Patchouli, Oak Moss, and Tonka Absolute. Yeah, um, see, it is very, very reassuring to smell something like this after the other ones because you think, oh gosh, I, I want, I want to smell, smell this on myself now. It, it's kind of there is definitely an an irony to it. So you know, there was a, there was a, a a a fad a few years ago. I think it's kind of faded now for women, certainly in Europe, in the UK, to don 1950s housewife dresses. Uh, with floral prints and cupcake prints and, and go to tea parties and things like that. But of course, they were doing that very, very ironically, fully aware, one presumes, fully aware of the position of women in 1950s Europe. This seems to be doing that same kind of ironic thing with men's sense. So we don't particularly want masculinity to entirely go back to what it was like in the 50s. But we can, you know, perhaps we could put sort of, I don't know, brill cream or wax in our hair and unbutton the top button a little bit and do a kind of like, you know, 1970s take on chest uh, chest exposure and, and enjoy this more old fashioned take on sense. And I, and I, I would agree with the, with the press release that it is the, it's the mintiness and the kind of medicinal herbal quality that makes it, um, makes it feel really, really modern. So I think we should do the other one. Now, White Whale, Sounds as though it's going to be completely different. By the way, in case you're wondering, I have no idea how these actually fit into the overall story of an opera and what that is all about and and and, and how it works. And I'm sure the information must be out there somewhere. Um, Call me Ishmael says, <laughs> it's me, Aubrey. Rachel says, White Whale, I'm most intellectually interested in. The perfumer spent five years making the ambergris accord. Oh, I did not know that. The perfumer is again Christian Allori. Um, if masculinity reverted to Bondi, it wouldn't be too bad, says Woozy. Is there ambergris in White Whale? Well, we shall find out, or maybe we'll find out. Okay, so let's see what this is going to be like. White Whale after the, um, the fern, and you may just about be able to see that on the sample, there is that whale tail motif. Can you see that? No real ambergris, says Rachel. Okay, so they just try to recreate the smell, did they run? White Whale from Mask Milano. Let us see. Oh, gosh, but certainly marine. Immediately making me run for the hills. Melanie marine. Suddenly, I'm like, I'm peeling a kind of cantaloupe melon and digging a fork into it and eating it. I'm not seeing whales as yet. I'm seeing lots of melons. Um, but very, you, you know, and, and I think a lot of you are with me on this, that marine notes are not usually my favorite thing just because more often than not i think they're so badly done but here there could be a suggestion of calone you know there could be a suggestion of something from new west or calvin klein escape but that not not in the way that makes me run for the hills because that one uh, calvin klein escape for men absolutely makes me run for the hills and set up in a cave there and never want to emerge for the rest of my life melon deserves a comeback honestly says it's me aubrey um Okay, so this is, I'm guessing this is this is going to be a bit of a journey. So we will need to give this one some time. Let's give it, it, it's already starting to present spicy facets and something dry and strange. It's very, very strange. Very, very strange. Okay, let's let's see what the, um, what the press material says. And then maybe by the time we finish reading that, there'll be a, a bit more development here. So, White Whale. A quote, of course, from none other than Mr. Melville. Call me Ishmael. Some years ago, I thought I would sail about a little and see the watery part of the world. The creation of the fragrance was a journey in itself. See the process described by Christian Allori, the perfumer. The starting point and the centerpiece of the fragrance is ambergris. I had worked on an ambergris accord, he says, using some natural ambergris as a target reference while working in the Paris IFF office. I pulled the accord out from my library and was ready and eager to use it in abundance. During our brainstorming, we clearly envisioned, envisioned rustic and rough woods. Contrary to smooth and polished, this ship was made to take on hardship, the harshest conditions that weather and the ocean can offer. We used Cedarwood, Virginia, Sister Slabdenum, uh, Patchouli from LMR, Vetiver from LMR, Cypress from LMR, and Oak Moss. 
we were careful dosing in the salty water nuances. Here's where we probably went through the largest number of reworks and modifications in order to reach the right balance with the other elements. Black pepper from LMR to give a cold, fresh, airy feeling combined and amalgamated so well with the salty water notes. Up until here, the fragrance was telling a story of dark and rugged life at sea. We decided to bring some light and warmth into the picture, countering with softness using osmanthus from LMR and violet flower. No wonder this feels just very, very strange and unique. We wanted to bring the nostalgic and familiar smell of the pages of an old book using oris concrete from LMR and alibinum from LMR. We finalized the pursuit of the mythical white whale with a touch of boozy absinthe, for the fellow crewmen before meeting their fate, we used Armoire's Heart, LMR, which contains a higher concentration of thujone than most Armoire's extracts. The use of our precious LMR natural raw materials was essential in the construction of this fragrance. So it, it they've, they've divided it into different sort of concepts, okay? So the head notes they've called Candles, Ropes, and the Vast Ocean, and that contains alibinum, salty rope accords, black pepper and, uh, sorry, a black pepper from Madagascar. So maybe that was the, the melony thing was meant to be the sort of salty saline aspect. The heart notes are what they call There She Blows. Um, that's That's got the ambergris accord, the osmanthus, the violet flower and the oris. And finally, the base notes are meant to represent the ship. That's got the cedar wood, the patchouli, the vetiver and the sister slabdenum. So conceptually fascinating. Now, you know how perfumery and associations work, right? As I read this, I'm thinking, yes, okay, I get it. I get the ship, I get the wood, I get the hardship, I get the sun, I get everything being sunbaked and damaged by and corroded by the saltiness. I'm not thinking I necessarily would have got that had I just smelt the perfume, but I think what I would have got was definitely a sense of strangeness and originality. There is, there is something world-weary about it. There is something of the past, and, and I guess that's um, that ties in with with the slight of fern because they both they both feel like they both feel nostalgic in a way, but one is nostalgic, and that's the slight of fern, and is and and is looking back through slightly rose tinted glasses, whereas this one is nostalgic and acknowledging harshness. It feels it feels pained, but in a really, really interesting way. This one will be fascinating to wear on skin. Because it's it's just 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 on the verge of kind of standoffish and off-putting, but not quite very, very complex, I think. And and clearly lots and lots of things happening there. Hmm. Interesting. Well done to the boys and girls at Mask Milano. That's a good press release, says San. Nothing pretentious. Sounds like a labour of love. Yes. One uses the vocabulary of perfume, says Rachel, and one establishes its own abstract vocabulary. Good, very good point. Absolutely. Very, very good point. Yes. And, and it does. But And very, very difficult to pick out a particular thing, except maybe just a dry woodiness supported by all of those other materials. Hmm, fascinating. Lots of things to smell for the, uh, the the blotter update. And I can't quite believe how this has happened, but we are at almost at the 55 minute mark. So I will just quickly mention this guy here. This is the 2022 limited edition re-release of Doson from Diptyque. A lot of you will be familiar with the scent. It first came out in 2005 as an EDT by Fabrice Pellegrin. Uh, then he did an EDP version of it in 2013. One of Diptyque's uh, most beloved scents, I think. Uh, a a, a well-done, um, airy, light, uh, and air-infused uh, tuberose. So if you haven't smelt it, do seek it out. And, and I think Diptyque are trying out this idea of going back to some sense in their archive and perhaps uh, re-releasing them, representing them, putting them in slightly different packaging. There's also the tuberose candle that is, that is um, packaging. So if you happen to be going, and if you've never smelled Doson, certainly a good place to start with the brand. Uh, Holly says, love this one, and the gift sets are so pretty. I assume you mean the Diptyque, yes, yes. And I, I think, did they do a hand cream for it as well, I seem to remember? Anyway, 
Thank you so much to all of you for watching. As always, like I said, please feel free to leave a comment, ask a question, whether you're watching the recording. And uh, please do consider supporting my work if you can. And, and, and tomorrow, 9th May, 5 p.m. UK time, a live interview with Sally Hughes. So uh, look forward to seeing you then. Until then, be good. Take care. Bye now.